team is Sniper Fedora, October 25th. It's also my birthday, so I'm going to tune in Spike TV. I had to take a piss right now. So the fit looks. You just worked out too, though, remember? So just when you walk out the front door, just look straight and you'll see uh, the door out there. Alright, right, bye. Peace. Okay, good. Yeah, just make sure because if, if you guys don't fill these out, you guys won't be able to corner. I got. I, I was as of um, July thirty sure. first. So you were here. Yeah. Corner them, then you're good to go. Then you're good because you're licensed. Okay. Cool. Um. Do I need anything else? I don't know. Done. Are we done? Go check. Go oh, here. Like, what do you give them more? Uh, physical form. Yeah. We'll fill this out. Can you give them more?
work. You look over these things, any of these other issues, fainting spells, shortness of breath, headaches? Yeah, I'll lose the horse. Any other knockouts in the past? Let's go. Right. Right. Okay. 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 Central on stage, the lovely ladies from Melbourne and the main Mercedes. And Jay, joining us here momentarily, the CEO, the chairman, the founder of Melbourne and the main Mr. Bjorn Repney. Dennis Green versus Angelo Sanchez, ladies and gentlemen. And on to the televised portion of our show. Of course, check us out on Spike TV. We start off with the middleweights, 185 pounds. Keith Berry versus Eugene Fadoria. First to the scale out of Murrieta, California. Keith Berry. We're going to 15 and 11, 9 KOs, 4 submissions. In those 15 wins, a guy who always brings in looks for the finish. He stands six foot one. Official weight. 185.8 for Keith Berry. Keith, coming in on the main card, Bellator.com. It's going to be on spike. Tell me about your thoughts moving into this fight. You're always aggressive. You always look for the finish. Does anything change this time? No, same fight. I'm just coming to fight. I'm happy to be here. Belgium really takes care of me, so I'm happy. I'm going to throw some good blows and have a good night. Go, Key. A good night for him means a knockout over this man, Eugene Fadiora. Official weight. 184.6 for Eugene Fadiora. What does it mean to you to make your Bellator debut, not just on the main card, but it's a guy who's going to come at you the way Keith Berry does? Is that the kind of fight you look forward to? Yeah, I'm always here to fight, and now I've made it to the big time. I think I need people that are going to push me, so it's all good. I'm looking forward to it. You bet, my man. This is right. action pack fight. Give it up for him. They'll kick off the televised portion of our show. Keith Perry versus Eugene Fadiora. Please aid us in the flow. Okay, in the flow. When we have a 10 second warning that the round is going to end, the deputy inspector. 
Hector will get up and he'll start making his way over towards the stairs. Please follow Sue Corman, follow his lead. We have basically a minute to get up there, get everything that you got to get done, and get back out of the cage. So please help us with that 10 second warning. When that 10 second, when that 10 second cap goes, make sure that we're ready. Now, when we have the 10 second whistle, when we're coming back into the next round, the start of the next round, it's very important. That does not mean that we have 15 or 20 seconds. That means that we have 10 seconds before the round starts. So we need to make sure that our stuff is cleaned up, we need to make sure that we're done, and we need to make sure that we're picked up and out of the cage because that, that referee is ready to start in 10 seconds. Now, once you guys are checked in, you must stay in the locker room and there's no exceptions. So make sure you get everything that you have to get taken care of prior to checking into the locker room. Uh, once you get in there, you need to use the restroom or you need to go here or there, find a deputy inspector. They will escort you. Only certified licensed cornermen will be allowed backstage. You have to be properly credentialed. When you arrive tomorrow, your bags are going to be searched by the deputy inspectors. Items that you're allowed in the locker room area will be ice, water, tape, gauze, mitts. We will allow you to bring fruit with skin on. Okay, so no pre-cut with skin on. So you can bring oranges, apples, bananas, any type of fruit that you feel you need to eat. As long as the skin is on, you are more than welcome to bring it. You may bring 100% fruit juice. You may bring coconut milk. You may bring Gatorade or Powerade. Those are all allowed items. No other food items or drink items will be allowed. Uh, we're working on getting the uh, we're working on getting Pedialyte and things like that pretty soon. That will actually be something we'll be able to do. But at this event, we will not be able to do that. I mean, no concentrates allowed. No energy drinks. No con they have the Gatorade concentrates. Those are not allowed. We can bring the juice, but not the concentrates. No energy drinks. Okay, do not start rapping without a DI present. If you do, you'll be asked to start over. Just that simple. <laughs> inspector, guys. Without an inspector. So make sure rapping that you have a deputy inspector present, or that's one way to start over. Okay, you may not layer. Okay? No layering. What we will allow, though, is we'll allow pre-wrap, and then we'll allow gauze, your build-up, and tape. And if you have the sponsor tape or whatever, that is all fine. We just cannot have any tape over the knuckles. You guys have great guys wrapping, so I doubt we'll have any issues. The inspectors just basically need to be able to take their index finger and feel all the knuckles, and the tape cannot be past that knuckle. But again, you guys have really good guys wrapping you, so we should not have a problem with that. Um, you may use ProFlex after. So we can use pre-wrap, gauze, tape, your buildup, and ProFlex to seal your, to, to finalize your wrap. No. No. no, guys, just tomorrow at noon, make sure your fighter check-in. Please don't be late. Everybody's mandatory check-in. We'll let you know the fight order, what time you need to show up for shuttles, what time we're getting you over there, what time doors open, everything tomorrow at noon. Please be on time, guys. Thank, thank you guys very much. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Shuttles will be right outside, right where they dropped you off at. Yeah, now he's... Get a water? He's a, he's a nice kid, too. He's a nice kid. 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 He's a n
How you doing? Thank you. How are you? How are you? Right here. Thanks, guys. Well, in your last fight against John Alessio, who was a tremendous veteran, you showed improved patience, better striking, and you used your wrestling on the way to a victory. What are you adding to your game tonight? Um, I'm going to try to keep the same thing going, you know, being very patient and understanding that I have 15 minutes to win this fight. Um, you know, putting my opponent in a position where he's going to have to look for different ways out of the fight. And, uh, if he uh, makes a mistake, I'll definitely hurt for a finish. But again, it's just staying patient, staying athletic, and understanding that I do have 15 minutes to win this fight. And what happened in your life? I mean, you initially take kind of stuff, and you look like you caught like a short up or yeah. something, and you just get in your head. Was it was a fluke. No, but you could never just be on the car. I'll be honest, I think I'm there. I mean, you know, I, I bought into that idea that it all better for me for that 10 minute, and I was already in the mindset that I was preparing for my return. So I was very passionate. This time around, I'm 110% focused on my fight and being very patient, uh, being very uh, imposing. And, you know, making sure that I'm not making small mistakes that I'm not taking, I'm not running my feet and doing the small technical things that uh, are necessary that could finish takedowns and uh, being a little bit more active in the finish and so uh, this is my favorite way to be active and initiating my own action. Is the clinch of position you going to want to avoid since you've heard my last name? Oh, uh, no, I mean, with a fight, it, it, it yeah, goes in and that's what I mean. I'm going to be able to bring you to. See, and that's, I just came up the opposite way, so it took me longer to rap for boxers than it did for grapplers. It's like nothing there at all, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Will Brooks, everybody, he's patient and he's ready. Back in
He's going to sleep. Got it. Mighty Mo, boy, it's good to see you. And you know what? I've only seen you with big giant uh, kickboxing gloves on. This is the first time I've ever seen you with MMA gloves. How do they feel on your hand? Different? You like it? Does it feel the same when you punch? Yeah. <laughs> You've uh, worked out with Ron Sparks before. You said uh, spar with him a little bit. What do you think of his fighting style? Uh, you know, he's got his own fight style. He goes. He's quite a brawler. What type of strikes do you need to avoid when you match up with him? Oh, uh, well, watching his last fights, I probably see his left hook. And I just talked to him and, of course, brought up that he's come off with two losses, which you didn't really appreciate. But he really feels like he's in a must-win situation. Do you feel like he has an added edge when he goes out there because of that? Yeah, uh, I can't worry about that, you know. Uh, uh, and how are you going to win this fight? Uh, whatever opportunity he gives me. Okay. That sounds uh, pretty vague there. How about you just knock him out? Yeah, it'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Quick and easy. It's Mighty Mo. He's putting on small gloves and he's knocking people out. Back to you guys. <laughs> Good to see you again.
about it. Right. You know exactly what to do. Something you can do in every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll all put your hands together and welcome the first fighter of tonight's live broadcast.